Hey folks, it's Simon from the Velo Performance Podcast. Now, this podcast is all about motivation, how to unstick yourself. I interview Jens, who I've worked with many times to help him train for things like Ironman and cycling and improve his overall fitness. And I love Jens, he's a really interesting guy who works in big business, making sure that the management team understand how to communicate really well and effectively right through the chain of command to help people get the best out of their working practice. So his understanding of motivation and what makes people tick is massive. And we have a really good conversation here about many of the things that we come across him and his business and mine in motivating athletes and cyclists to get the best out of their training. I hope you really enjoy this podcast. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hey, Jens, welcome to the Velo Performance Podcast. It's really cool to have you on. I mean, a lot of people won't know, but you and I have worked together as, as a coaching team, so I've helped you do Ironman. Um, I think the best way to do this, really, is to just jump straight in. You tell us about yourself, what what do you do, and you know, we'll take it from there. Yeah, Simon, great to be here. Um, yeah, what shall I say about myself? The most interesting piece from a business perspective is that I was the global head of innovation of IKEA centers worldwide, traveled around the world. And that's where we kind of, the two, we, we both connected. And I was looking for a coach who is helping me to finish a proper Ironman. <laughs> and, and somehow we linked up and, and I started the journey and, and finished an Ironman. For me, quite successful in 11 hours. Yeah, and then... We, we kept on working in different things and I stepped out of the corporate world, building all my own businesses and now supporting like startups, entrepreneurs, but as well, very large organizations on leadership and on innovation systems in their organization. Not not as fit and as, anymore as, as I was like before COVID, but go, getting back to it. So my goal the, these days is at least 90 minutes of training, which I think for a normal person that's not doing sport is still a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll let you get away with that. Yeah, um, thanks. But uh, I mean, the reason why I've got you on is because of your uh, working practice now and, and what you do within business. Um, and one of the things we're trying to really grow here at Velo is for people to understand themselves better. And I know what you're doing in your entrepreneurship, your innovation uh, focus with your uh, business clients that that's quite a big thing for you trying to get people to understand themselves better yeah. um, and this is the thing that we're doing here at Velo um, so I mean look you know I'll, I'll hand this over to you because I think what would be really cool to talk about would be a lot of people struggle with their focus mm -hmm. um and I think, you know, I've talked about this last week when I was in New York with a lot of people. People say, oh, you're always on it. And I'm like, well, yeah, but I have that vision of where I want to be in 70 years old, when I'm 70 years old. I don't want to be that doddery old 70-year-old that can't get out of a car. Um, and hopefully I'm still riding a bike and kicking people's backsides. Um, <laughs> but I am making sure I'm doing all the right stuff to, to get in that position. So... You know, I always look at it and say, I'm really laser beam focused, but how do people learn about themselves and get in that space? It's it's fairly simple and you you scratched it already. It's it's having a vision where you want to be. And mm -hmm. that's not existing for 90% of the people out there. Mm -hmm. And that it, it goes into sports. If you want to finish an Ironman, I believe everyone who is healthy can do that. And they, they just need to put the work in over a consistent period of time to be able to finish one. Mm -hmm. And that's the same from a business perspective. And that's what I do a lot with people. I, I try to get an understanding of where do they want to be in five and 10 years and get them very, very clear, aware that they're painting a picture, yeah. a picture of themselves being in that spot and then backcasting to today and look into okay what do you need to do today to be able to get there in five or ten years and what you sh what should you not do it's like it, it's very obvious when you want to get fit and lean and and we talked about that quite a lot because i'm not as fit these days um it's like don't eat shit 
and do <laughs> and do proper exercises. It's fairly easy. And when when you when you build a business, we have talked about that as well. Like I don't know, like two years back or when you when you started Velo, it's like do the things and do it consistently, and the consistency pays back all the time. That's interesting. Actually, it's quite a cool thing to talk about. So when I started Velo, Velo was started in COVID times, which is probably the worst time still to even think about. <laughs> <laughs> but it was bought it was started because one of the guys i was coaching saying to me he's like mate if you can ride a bike at the age of 50 the way that you ride it you need to show people that's possible um so i started and i remember i was coaching you at the time yeah. and we, i was talking about how i was going to do this and you were like look it's really straightforward you just need to decide where you want to take it understand uh what the business model is make that really tight in your mind and never change from it and then just go with it just push yeah so talk about what you do and actually that's a that's exactly what i did i was like right this is how who i want to talk to this is what i want to talk about and it's just churning that out week in week out week in week out and the same i think that's the same thing from fitness right understanding it is and this is the whole point of this podcast it's like if people want to get in great shape, if people want to change the way they look, feel and act, they need to understand what that vision is and, and what it feels like to get in that space. And it's uncomfortable, right? You know, I mean, I, la- I used to laugh at the, actually, I started this podcast because you said to me, <laughs> I dare you to start that podcast. It's like, it's really easy. You just need to like get these platforms and you sent me some emails with bits and pieces and says, do it over the weekends. Record your first podcast. And I remember sitting there going, I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, I'm good because I'm, I'm going to do it because I'm that sort of person. I was like, let's just do that. Let's yeah. just. And I thought, right, okay. So, I, same thing with Bello. It's like, right, what do I want to talk about in the podcast? What makes my podcast just different? Which is getting uh, inspirational guests on and then getting people in their industry who are like leaders, thought, entrepreneurs all that sort of stuff go right let's talk about this um and it's worth you know like people listen to podcasts um and then they get in touch and say oh, you know let's talk about coaching um but actually it's more than that it's, uh, i only start the podcast a bit like the youtube channel which is like much well, great way for people to get in contact with me or understand where i am at and realize that because like, this the other thing is you know people think he's mad he's actually crazy he's like trashing around on a bike he must be st- uh, stitched into his bike 24 <laughs> 7 so i can couldn't possibly do that i was like well no uh, by having all of this allows people to connect and understand that and really approachable anyway yeah. i've gone off the subject but it's good because that, i think that's part of the business model of the future if you built a business you need to build an ed- educational angle around it mm-hmm. That that gets people to explore you already, like a year ahead of they are thinking about working with you, because they they can they can do it out of of your videos. Like you explain so many things in your videos and in your podcast, and you inspire people through the educational angle, and that's then maybe one out of one hundred is then saying would love to work with Simon. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a completely different way of thinking from a business perspective, and that helps people. If they have a vision where where they want to be, they can start alone. If we take me back, I don't know, I think it was 2012 when I said, okay, I'm going from running marathons to getting into triathlon. I was starting myself and trying to like read all the different things that are out there and trying to figure out how to do it. Then I did a couple of sprints, then I did an Olympic, and then I did my first half Ironman without the coach. And I said, okay, now I'm hooked. I want to do something better. I want to get to the next level. And then I reached out to my first coach. And then after one to you, when when I said, ah, I, that's not enough for me. I want, I need, I need to get to the next level again. Mm-hmm. And I think this educational angle is just an inspiration, but also gives possibilities to people who can't afford to work with you because you're not the cheapest coach in the world, but you're good in what you're doing. And that's how it is. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> I think the thing, the cool thing with Velo is, is it, it, where with the other coaches that come on board, we're always trying to uh, give the athletes that we coach a better service. That's always been my m- mindset. It's like, look, you know, we're not just about here's your programming and all that sort of stuff. And I think the thing that uh, has worked for me is my mindset about just do. 
Um, and again, this is the thing that we've talked about a little bit, touched a bit, but about, I, I, I said to you when we first started talking before we started recording, Chris Williamson's podcast is like, oh, this really resonated when I was chatting to Shannon, who's one of the ladies I coach, and she's in Mexico City yesterday. And we were talking about motivation and things like that. And he talks about this one quote, and I'm going to murder this badly. Um, it's like, well, whenever I think this is hard, I remember that this is part of the deal and hard is what we should all work towards. And this is when most people give up. And this is why I'm not going to. And, and, and you know, from coaching, this is the one thing I don't do. I don't babysit people. So if they're, if, if, if they, if they literally just don't do their training, it's like, why are you here? But I think, again, looking at that point, it's like hard is hard, right? You know, we all have tough weeks where life gets in the way. Uh, you get cold, you get flu, whatever. And that's hard to keep working and keeping your motivation. Um, so are there things, I think we've touched on it, are there things that we should be putting in place i would say to my guys let's simplify everything make it really straightforward don't put barriers in your in front of you you need to this is why my programming is not that intricate because people look and go i can't you know if it's super tough they're looking at i don't know what i'm doing here you know so you make it really straightforward that makes it easier to come to and then and then commit to and then execute right i i think that's the thing that that's really important and from a motivational perspective if you simplify things and go right this is how i'm going to do stuff i mean what's your experience with working in business what what are the biggest roadblocks that most people do don't or do badly is probably the best way to ask this it, it's pretty similar it, people know what they should be doing but they are not doing it because it's hard to stick to it Okay. That, like, in what way? So, if you've got a good example that you can chuck at me, if we if we say a good example, if if you take entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs want to be successful, they want to be successful yesterday. Mm -hmm. So you're expecting things are if if you're starting out, for example, you're expecting things to happen today and yesterday and tomorrow, latest the day after tomorrow. But that's not how this world works. It means you need to consistently put the things in. That you you if you have a ne have never been sitting on a bike, don't expect that you can cycle 180 kilometers tomorrow. It's not going to work. Yeah. So it is one thing is the vision perspective, and and I I like to work with five to to ten years. But the other thing is why do you want to be in that vision? Why is that important to you? If you don't know the why, then you're not pushing through when it's getting hard because it is getting hard. Maybe the, when you start out to doing something in business. In the same way, it's like honeymoon. It's like, oh, I created my first YouTube video. I created my first podcast. And then, oh, that was just the first one. And, uh, and, and only five people listened to it. And that was maybe like my best buddies. But then keeping a system going, building a system around you that helps you to get there and doing it every week, every week, every week. I've done this uh, and you have been part of my podcast as well. Now over 200, what is it? 30 episodes and that's years of work it's not happening in in a week but that also means consistently will help you to get to where you are and that's the same if you are sitting on a bike or the same when you are running when you like I, I always compare and give the example because that's still what I feel when I was inside of the marathon in 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 the Ironman you, you don't think about the finish line maybe there's a little glance to the finish line but it's it's about the next tree Get to the next tree. Get to the next tree when it gets tough. Yeah. But don't stop. If you stop, it's it's going to be harder to get going. Same if you do a podcast. If you stop, it's getting harder to get going. Yeah. And then it's it's really if if you are in an, a company context a little bit larger, then it's even more important because you are seen. If you are a manager in a in a in a business context, you are seen as the good example. If you are not pushing through when when it's going to be hard, nobody else will do. And then the whole company goes down. So, I mean, I think you hit a really good point. A lot of people, in my mind, their vision is only that race. So, and this is not what Velo is about. Velo is all about being your best on and off the bike, but it's actually just getting you a really good fit position so you can take on anything. So it's not about one target. It's just about you yeah. being the best you can be. 
So actually, that could be me coaching you to a point where you feel super confident that you can take everything that you've learned from me and go away and consistently do that for the rest of your life. And we, uncom- we unpick and uncomplicate nutrition, training, show people what needs to be done. But that, that the one thing you said earlier, which resonates with me massively, is most people just look at their first goal and just never really get started. Yeah. You know, or they look at it and, yeah, well, actually, that's probably the better way to say it. It's just never really get started because they haven't really, really decided they need to put the effort in to get it done. Yeah. Um, and then it's wishful thinking. I mean, yeah, of course, I wish to be a, a millionaire, billionaire, whatever. But if you're not putting the work in, it's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things I think um, I've. There are actually two things that spring to mind that I think pull people back and should track them are their friend. This sounds terrible. Their friends, um, because if you get to a position where you're super fit and healthy, uh, and your friends around you aren't super fit and healthy, they're the ones that actually detract from you because they feel like, well, actually, you know, it's a good example. You're a mirror to what they could be, and they Ab- don't like it. Absolutely right. This- there, there's a famous saying, you're the average of the five people you spend most time with. Yeah. And if you are not the average, then everyone tries to drag you down because you are lifting the average and it's getting to be harder for them. That's yeah. the same in business. It's quite funny. So it's when, interesting. So it's either you, you get into a group that helps each other and everyone is saying, oh, let's move the target. And that's what you should be striving for if you build a business. Mm-hmm. Get into a group of people that are eager to do something and eager to push through because if you're not then you're worst case in the group that's dragged you down and you will never achieve what what you are setting out to do so it's a good example of this is that you know my i've got a couple of friends who are uh just as uh focused and driven on on doing um challenging stuff whether it's a bike running whatever you know but i've also got some other friends who think that uh, what we do is unnecessary um and i'm like that's fine that's your take on my life but i my life is like well what other crazy things can i do that actually when people say crazy i was looking i don't think it's crazy anymore uh there are you know there are people who are doing way harder stuff yeah. than i'm doing and i need to up my game and that's the thing so i mean you don't say that out loud to people because they really they really push back at that um, and that's something to be super aware of the people around you that can push you forward and detract you. Yeah. Um, and that's hard, right? You know, people, um, your motivation can be di- directly impacted and your feelings of focus impacted by people just saying one word to you. Yeah. That's, that's why this why is so important. Mm-hmm. When I work with people on a one-on-one base, which is rarely happening now is, is really find out the why and put it so so written down it's almost like an a4 page Mm -hmm. that you that is so clear to you that you know why you are setting out to do something and that that propels you forward because if you don't have this why a long-term perspective it's it's just yeah like you said okay i want to do the first race and then you give up because it was hard or i fell down and i fed the flat tire and didn't manage my time or whatever it was Mm -hmm. Do you, is there, when you're looking at your why, does it have to be like huge or can it be really, or can it just be one or two things that, that, that is your why? It can be super simple. Mm-hmm. It's more when you describe it, that's why I'm saying in a four page, describe it in a way that it is going so deep and you're describing it so well that you says, yes, I truly believe that this is the most important why for me. Mm-hmm. Should I mean the his thing should is that as a practice, should people do this on a regular basis just to check in with themselves? Yeah, definitely. I would I would say at least every year. Mm-hmm. And most of the time I do this even with with team members. So when we look into personal development, I do this exactly same process, which is where do you want to be in five years? Then we look into what is what is the why behind this? Oh, we, we're starting not where do you want to be? We say, who do you want to be? Mm-hmm. And then we look into why do you want to be that person? And then we look into, okay, what gets you 
towards that goal and what drags you away from that goal. Mm -hmm. And then we build a year plan, which is, okay, this is your year perspective towards the five years. Let's focus on how do you develop yourself. And that's then more a business context. But in the end, I've had people saying, yeah, I want to live in a different country in five years. Okay, Mm -hmm. how does that work with the business context? Maybe you need to find a new job, which is all fine. It's more you decide where you want to be in five years and understand the why behind this. And then you you build a plan that gets you there. It's not that difficult. It's just that a lot of people are not doing it systematically. And I always say, okay, you jump into a car and start driving. You don't know where you want to go. No, No wonder that you end up nowhere. Yeah, you're just driving around aimlessly. Exactly. Well, let's let's face it. Some of your mates are doing that weekly, right? So <laughs> they are like, you know, going to work, getting drunk at the weekends and have no no aim at all. Yeah. And maybe actually maybe their aim is to retire early and just then do nothing with their lives. Um personally I don't that's not me. It's like, well, I really want to be my whole focus is being in great shape, financially sound. Uh, and loving what I do. So people always say to me, hey, Sam, are you going to retire? I'm like, no, heck no. Because I don't I don't see retiring as as a as a thing. I, I think when you see people who retire and do nothing with their lives, they don't basically just waste away. Yeah. Um, I still want to be trashing around on my bike and, and hopefully inspiring people that they can do the same. Yeah. But when- and I, I can give you my example of one of my 10-year perspectives is we have lived in so many places around the world that I want to give my daughter, who is now six or getting to be six, the possibility to go all the places where we have been and we can spend as much time at that place as to say, hey, this is a house where we lived in together. You were only one year old, like in Sweden, for example, um, but that's where you grew up. And I want to have the possibility to go around and travel with her to all the fun places so that she can relive that experience which she has like no no memory about and and that's that sounds maybe super silly for some people for me it's important if if that's part of your why then exactly it, you know it's one of the things that's spurring you on to keep going but what well, I, I think here's a cool thing and we sort of like talked about it before we went on and start recording i think a lot of people overcomplicate uh movement forward um and it's like, you know, so a lot of people, a good example, actually a good example from a, a coaching stroke athlete perspective is one of the guys that I coach, Noel, gets really busy. Um, and there's two things I said to him to start off with. I was like, look, you really want to change your body shape, your cycling ability. And we know that you get busy. And he used to have the all or nothing at all approach. Um first thing I said to him, I said, I, when you look at your diary for the week, I want you to put you in there first. And he was like, what? I was like, look, you put everybody else there and you just fit yourself in wherever you want to. But put your training in, in your diary, and then nothing comes in that way. And then when life does get tough and you find that everything's changed because his, his business is fluid sometimes on a day-to-day basis. When he gets back uh, later in the evening than expected, we've worked out this is quite a cool way of doing things. So like, just do what you can. So if you have an hour training session and you only do 20 minutes of that hour training session, do 20 minutes of that training session. Yeah. Don't change anything off the training session. Just do it. Just do the warm up, a couple of sets, get off. And he's like, really? I was like, well, put it this way. 20 minutes is better than no minutes. Um, and he was like, okay. And that's revolutionized his way of looking at training and given him... I think it's given him sort of almost that positivity of going, do you know what? Previously me would just sit in front of the telly and drink a beer. New me gets home and goes, I've only got 30 minutes, but I know Simon said, I don't care if you've got 30 minutes, just do 30 minutes. And that's actually, I think that's how people move forward in business. And that's how people move forward with their fitness. People always just think, Oh, you know, I can't do this mammoth. I'm like, look, just break it down. Do what you can um i love that because i i give the same advice when it comes to business or leadership is really build your calendar and focus on your time first and then do the most important things early in the morning for for most of the people that for example prospecting and getting new leads as 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 a business owner is one of the most essential things to get towards more clients 
But if you don't reach out to new people, you're not getting new, new clients. Mm -hmm. So I always say, okay, do 100 every day. And everyone's like, oh, that's hard. That takes me three hours. If it takes you three hours and you have like a lot of clients, you can lift that to someone else doing it. But if mm -hmm. you don't do it, it's not going to happen. Yeah. And it's put it first, get up at five, do the first three hours, reach out to people, but do it. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the other thing I find is a lot of people aren't prepared to make themselves uncomfortable and do those extra hours to get to where they need to get to. And this is the other thing from coaching Iron Men, so people and triathletes. I always think triathletes get a really hard time. Um, but actually, they are. I was who did I say this the other day? I said this to someone else the other day. Um, I was like, you know, these guys have families. They run. They run a business, and they swim, bike, and run in a day. These guys possible. know how to manage their time. It's very possible. Yeah, it's hard. Um, but you know, but when, you know, when people say, "Oh, it's impossible," like, these guys do it. <laughs> I still yeah. remember when you coached me for the uh, Ironman Hamburg. Like I was moving, I was traveling around the world at that time, had a, a young child and we somehow made it work. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes meant, I, I still remember when I was traveling to Asia, okay, let's do a run focus week, no swim, no bike. And yeah. then we, deal, we we work around it, but at least get whatever, half an hour run in per day. And that's always possible. And that's linked back to, there is always something you can do, even if you're injured. Yeah. Just people don't. Because they just they, they give up. They go, oh, I can't do this today. Yeah. Um. And you know, it's like that. It's such a that mindset of uh, of of some some people who are struggling with how to move forward. I just think it's like just that one step further forward. It, again, it's back to that. It's like just move that direction a little bit further each day, and things change for the better for you. Yeah. I one thing we talked about earlier as well before we started recording this was people's people get paralyzed by fear um and I've definitely uh when starting up YouTube uh and the podcast maybe less so on the podcast because I, I was always like I don't care what people think um but when I started up YouTube it was like oh my word I'm gonna have to do videos <laughs> My hair's gonna need to look good, uh, uh, and also on the real stuff on Instagram. But actually, over time, I still didn't care. I used to really worry about that stuff, but actually, but now I'm like, well, you look, you look old today and tired, and it's pardon the French, but I go fuck it. I'm, I'm just it, doing it anyway. That that's how it is, and it's it it's just like like I said, you build the habits to do it. Yeah, and if if you just get this going as a business or not, same in sports. Like you don't need to be in the nicest sports clothes ever. Just do it. Yeah. And I think that's a cool. One of the things I developed for myself is, you know, because that software in the back of your mind that says, oh, you're tired. You can't do this today. It's a bit late. All that sort of stuff. Um, I'm lucky because uh, I'm single and live my own, so I can easily do this. But the minute that chimp starts chittering, he's saying, you can't do this. So I hit the gym generally late in the evening because it's quite a cool time to go because it's empty. Um, and sometimes the chimp in my head's like, oh, don't go today. You're tired. And the minute that happens, I literally drop everything, just walk out the door. Yeah. Um, and that always makes me chuckle because it's, it's like, I, you know, literally, right, gone. Like pick up car keys, pair of shorts on, T-shirt on, off to the gym. Uh, it's almost like a two fingers up at the chimp. <laughs> <laughs> I I have, the, I have the same with work. I mean, I, I was as strict as, as you are with my training as well. Now I shifted the whole focus over the last two years towards my businesses. Yeah. But, but I also see now that you need to have the balance. Yeah. Like just doing business and you're getting a fat, like does, doesn't work as well. So you need to have a, a, a good business practice. But as old, you're way better from a brain functioning if you're not working like i'm doing 15 hours work consistently which is if you ask my wife way too much but for the vision i have i think it's it i should work more yeah but on the other hand i also know that i need to get now at least my 90 minutes of sports in per day because that helps me to keep fit yeah and also um, mentally exactly i think the word What's the word I want to say? Deloads you, right? So I don't know about you, but when I train, 
if everything feels like it's a bit pressurized, so you, you know, it's like, oh, okay, so everything's going hard, you know, so I, I've got prospects I need to talk to. I've got athletes that are like banging on the door going, oh, can we do this? Can we do that? And I'm like, yeah, okay. But I still need my fitness to be strong. Um, and I know when I go out on the bike and I go, let's say a two hour ride, nothing into it. So I turn all the notifications off and all that stuff. I'm not, I just, this is my time. What I often find is that completely deloads the stress as in yeah. uh, everything pounding in onto the head and it's it's like you come back re it's almost like someone's defragged the memory and said right this is what you need to focus on right now today everything else doesn't matter yeah. and this is what i think sport and training and health and fitness is so important to be putting in on a day-to-day -day basis i agree I, i'm i'm doing seven days a week now consistently since i don't know at least two months mm -hmm. and it's and it, it, it's not ironman level because you always <laughs> that's maybe something as well for the for the listeners you always compare to yourself to your best shape to your best state but you don't need to be there to be fit and healthy no nope. i don't need to finish an ironman below 11 hours the next half year or the year if i if it's not part of my vision But you can still be fairly fit and not finish an Ironman. Yeah, so here's the cool thing. So, you know, we're heading towards the autumn now. Uh, so when this podcast goes out, it goes out, I think it goes out next month. Um, so you'll see a lot of people talking about off-season and deload, et cetera. Um, now, I, my mind, I, I don't think as older athletes, we need to have an off-season. We just change our focus a little bit. Hmm. Um. But, you know, that does mean your fitness is is going to drop naturally because you're just not doing the same volume because it's darker at night. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to be strong, fit and powerful. Exactly. You just need to train in a way that's going to help you get there in the first place, right? And, yeah. and keep that taking over, or maybe taking over is the wrong thing to say, is really driving forward with that. So when you do have the ability to add more volume on later on, as you come into the spring months, you are super, super strong. You're like, oh, huh, yeah. I've done the right stuff. So it's just that different change in mindset. You don't, I, you know, there, are, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a point in my life where, although I can't see that because the vision I've got for myself, where I want to do on a bike at the moment is, is big, long distance stuff. Um, but I think uh, I know that when the winter autumn months come in, I, I naturally drop volume down. doesn't mean I'm any less powerful or strong. Hmm. Um Just potentially, you know, my my long distance stuff is just going to drop out fractionally, but not massively, because I know what I'm doing in training. I know how to keep that ro robust, um, and that's the thing. So people go, "Well, I can't, I can't. If I do this, I I can't stay fit and strong, so I just give up." I'm like, "Yeah, you don't need to think that way. You just need to think slightly differently." Again, yeah. that's what you do with business. So like, look, things have changed but we can really dial in onto this and we can make you move forward. And that's what I do with my coaching. So don't stress about this. Yeah, okay, you don't have the same volume of time, but if we do this, this, and this, this is why this is going to work for you. Uh, that, that's I that's I, super important in the business landscape in the same way. You need to keep being on your toes to figure out, okay, things are changing. If you work with YouTube, it's changing. If you work with the podcast, it's changing. All the social media, like the whole marketing thing is changing. Mm -hmm. The, the way you interact with businesses, if you work with very large corporations, you do workshops, the people are not any anymore in the offices. They're working from home still all around the world. So it, you need to adapt all the time and be on your toes to find out what is the best way to get your business to the next level. Yeah. And the same thing for your body, right? Uh, I, exactly. I, I just think a lot of people just, they get to a point and they back it off. And I think the other thing is I see on a regular basis is they, because people, and again, this is why Velo exists outside of Triforce, which is the other business, because people in Triforce are focusing on that one thing that I want to get to Kona, got there, done that, right, done. Whereas with Velo, it's just like, I'm going to get you in great shape and you look bloody amazing. And you're going to be part of a community that is just wanting to get in that sphere of mindset and focus. And yeah, it takes time. But you tell me how much time you've got, I'll make sure you do the right things in that time. And then you can consistently do it year on, year out, year on, year out. Yeah. Um, 
and I, in my mind, I just love that focus. It's like people go, oh yeah, this is actually not that hard to get in that. It, yeah, it takes it takes energy, it takes focus, it takes a bit of dedication. Um, I think this is what people just don't do. You know, they don't have that will to be consistent with it, or, or for whatever reason, just don't do it. Yeah. You know, that, that, that word unnecessary keeps dropping. <laughs> The, the interesting part and, and and another parallel between sports and uh, business is you have numbers. If you, I, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a numbers freak as well when it comes to sports. I still know my heart rate when I was running like like an hour thirty um, in prep for the Ironman. It was below hundred twenty, mm -hmm. and now it's a little higher. Let's say it like this, <laughs> <laughs> and slower at the same time. But I still know what is healthy and what is not healthy. And that's the same in the business. You have the numbers. And a lot of times you just need to look at the right numbers to find out, okay, how do we get back to where we were? What are the things you need to dial in to get to that level again? So, I mean, the thing is, is that, you know, from a motivational perspective, I think people are always thinking they need to be perfect. Uh, which is an absolute lie. No one yeah. is perfect. In fact, there is no perfect. The only thing people re think uh, the reason why they need to be perfect is because on social media, you know, if you see all these gurus, I can't even remember who he's, he is, but I, I follow him because actually says some good stuff. But his backgrounds look p pitch perfect, all that sort of stuff. And I think a lot of people go, "Well, I can't ever compete with that level of perfectness, and therefore never try in the first place." Yeah. Um, and you've hinted at it as well. It's like, it doesn't matter if you're riding in crappy old DHB with a, a, a massive hole in it. Just get on your bike and ride it. You know? Yeah, and you don't need to have the most fanciest bike no. to, to, to go out riding. Yeah. So all these things are barriers you're putting in your head. It's like, well, my mates ride around on a, I don't know, a Scott foil, whatever. Um, and I've got a, a winter bike, which is steel, and is 10 kg. It's like, well... That's where everybody started. That's where I started. So I start there and then save a bit of money, buy a better bike as you get fitter. Yeah. Make but it's not about the bike at all. Well, it is. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I get it. Depends what you want to do. But if you want to get fit, you don't need to have the most expensive yeah. bike. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. can do that so on a steel bike. It's a bit flippant thing. Yes, it is. But here's the thing. It is about your fitness. Uh, you, have, you, know, you can buy the best bike in the world, but if you're not fit, what's the point? I, I was about to say, you know, talking about Ironman again, there are this these guys who have the most expensive bikes and then you pass them after, I don't know, you almost, if, if you have a loop, you, you pass them twice. Like, hey, like you have double the expensive bike than I have, but you can't even pedal. <laughs> maybe they need to spend less money on the bike and more money on a coach. Yeah, maybe. Um, but I mean, look, I've, I've got different ways of looking at this. It's like, well, if... Now, let's say someone's got loads of expendable cash, but buying that bike was the one thing that made them do a bit of training and got them out of, you know, a rut, then that's cool. So I've never really looked at people and, and thought, yeah, you're slow on that really expensive bike. I just don't know their their history. But, yeah. I, you know, it's not, if you want to get really strong and efficient and quick, it's not always just about the bike. It's about what you do and once you get into a position where you are riding strong and fit and fast, so maybe riding, getting a, a, a better bike is going to help you, you know, tow in, keep, keep up with and tow the line with people in the chain gang, etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, but yeah, most people buy the bike and that's, that annoys me. So most people buy the really expensive bike and don't train. I'm just like, well, it doesn't cycle on its own unless you get an e-bike in which yeah. case you're cheating. Uh, and that's that's the same for entrepreneurs if we if we talk about like single entrepreneurs or very small companies doing podcasts and videos like they have the most expensive gears you can do this with your phone like we could yeah. record this on the phone and the quality would almost be as okay as this is yeah and and that's the other thing so that when we talked about what i was doing with fellow and youtube yeah. and all that sort of stuff I and I speak to so my nephew was like, Oh, I wouldn't mind starting a YouTube channel because, but I need to buy all the kit. And I was like, You've got an iPhone 14 Pro, right? And he's like, Yeah. And I was like, What do you think I film all my videos on? He was like, Well, I don't know. And I was like, An iPhone 14 Pro. 
Yeah. And he's like, what? I was like, the reason why you don't start it is because you've put barriers in your head already. So like, just start filming, make mistakes, look, you know, look and sound like a bit of an idiot when you're doing it. It doesn't matter. So like someone along the line is going to align with you. Um, and as you do more, you get more confident about what you're doing and you decide how, you know, what's the best hook, what's the best way to talk, how to cut and edit. And that's the same thing for training, right? You start somewhere and you think, I, my cadence is all over the place on the bike. You know, I ride hills. And I'm just cooked at the top. But as you get fitter and you understand cadence better, you think, well, actually, I'm way more efficient going up the hills now and I'm fitter. It's just that consistency act of doing over time that, that helps you get better. And also, I think that gives you the motivation to keep going. Yeah. Um, I think from a business perspective, which works, ties in very nicely from a fitness perspective, when people are actually, because the mind's quite a, a tough, tough thing to talk about, that sort of like mentality of, of dealing with stuff when things get tough mentally. Is there anything in particular that you tell your clients that you look at and you say, look, you know, when things get tough, just do this. Yeah, it's it's the small stuff. It it, it It's maybe not as sexy as the bigger vision things, but it's really like do it. Mm -hmm. just one step after each other just do it if if it's tough to for you to do a youtube video just do it you get better over time mm -hmm. if you don't like to reach out to people just do it mm -hmm. like i'm super introvert i don't like to talk to people that i don't know but i'm just doing it because i know it's it's working and you just need to do it consistently and then you get better that's quite it's, a cool thing yeah so I, I, with coaching and, and, and helping people stay on point and motivated, it's like, you know, one of the things we say is give it 10 minutes, right? So how many times have you, you know, got in a pool, gone for a run? Uh, my guy's got on a bike and thought, oh, I just don't want to do this today. Yeah. Uh, I, I've done it as well. But you ride again. I don't care what happens. Put the kit on, ride out for 10 minutes. So actually, well, I'm out now. I'm not turning around because that's that's ridiculous. <laughs> but true, we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep going. It's, um, it's it's the same thing with with this. And it what what I'm a systems thinker, so I always put systems in place that help me to do things. And the same propose this to the people I work with. It's really like you you were teaching me the the same thing. If you go out running, just do 20, 20 minutes. If you you can stop straight away after 20 minutes or 10 minutes that's fine yeah, but yeah. at least you have been out and you have done your first steps and i it's... don't know anybody that i've coached that has said i just ran 10 minutes and stopped today so. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's exactly how it is and it's the same for businesses it's like yeah. you need to get through the the tough things mm -hmm. like going on the bike when it's raining is not always pleasant at, at, I mean, for UK, UK living people, you are getting used to rain. But if you live somewhere <laughs> else, like when I was living in Spain, the guys I was riding with, they were never going out when it was raining. Like, no, no it's raining. We cancel our ride. Yeah, yeah. You'd be like, what are you talking about? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's really building systems in place which help you to to still do it from a work perspective in the same way. What's the word I'm trying to think of? My brain is... is because I've got a cold at the moment, my brain is not working properly. Um, but one of the things is, is you put systems in place, but it's also that sort of like, it's almost like non self non-negotiables, right? Exactly. You know, it's like, right, I'm not doing that. It's like, you know, if that, if this happens, then this happens, you know? Um, and I think here's the thing. I think, you know, people just in my mind and from my experience, people just don't do that with themselves. You know, there's that sort of like weird, under, not understanding, but there's weird sort of like outward look about, well, this person's just like super driven. Um, and I could never be like that. I was like, no, this is what you need to do to move forward. Exactly. It's it's accountability yeah. to yourself. Yeah. Some, yeah. some people, like you are a coach, so some people need a coach to keep them accountable. And you know, oh, Simon's looking at my trainings and he will see that I was slacking. Or he will see that I was not doing things. And and you need to build systems like this in business as well. And that don't need to be a professional coach or someone. It can be a, a colleague, a friend, who is just, let's keep each other accountable. Yeah. I mean, again, this is why you're part of 
uh, an entrepreneurial innovator group where potentially I, I bet you guys say right what are you going to do the next next month and when we check in did you do it exactly right and, and we, we we did this just I mean, we have talked a little bit more about the entrepreneurial to the small world. We did this on IKEA level, like really? 150,000 employees mm -hmm. in the same way. Of course, the systems are then slightly different, but in the end, it's the same way of thinking. How do you keep each other accountable? Let's build a plan. Let's let's move things forward so that we can learn from it. Do, do an exercise that's maybe a little bit hard, but next next day you can do an easy one. This is what we're trying to do at Velo, right? So it's like I'm almost half thinking of trying to get people to buddy up and make right. This is you. This is your buddy, and if you get stuck, as much as you've got your coach, you've also got a Velo coach athlete that you can get in touch and go. I'm struggling. What do I do? Yeah. And they can sort of almost mentor you through it. Um, I'm not sure how that would work, but it's been nagging in the back of my head. I was like, this is quite a cool thing to do. Um. And it's also one of the reasons why we're getting people to think about their future vision, what that feels like, what it looks like, how it make them feel if they don't get there, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I have a lot of like canvas tools. If you're interested, I'm happy to share that with you and, and your your teams as well. Yeah, oh, they always, you know, <laughs> it takes a bit of pressure off me to create stuff and send it my way. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just things, you, you know, when, I have had the possibility to be in all these executive leadership trainings you get when you're in a fancy, big, very corporate. And I have rebuilt and reused them so that they're easy to understand for startup people, for example. And sometimes it's like very basic things, a canvas to find out what is your vision, a canvas to find out what is your superpower, what drives your energy, like very basic things. If you if you see them, you say, like, okay, I can fill this in. I love <laughs> It's like, what is your superpower? Um, my my superpower, I reckon, is I'm just bloody minded. <laughs> if, some, if someone says I can't do it, I do it. It's like, screw you. I'm going to show you that it's possible. Uh, and it winds me up when people say, oh, you know, you're too old for that. I'm like, shut up. Let me show you <laughs> how that works. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's cool. I like that. It's like, what is your superpower? Um, because I... Maybe people, uh, getting people to actually sit and think about it in their own heads is probably the best way to get them to motivate themselves. In their exactly. Because I don't think people really do that. They're so, with work and everything else and families and loved ones and stuff like that, no one really dials in on, in on themselves anymore. It's always out, out, out. Yeah. I don't know if it takes a moment to go, oh, hang on a minute. What about me? Um, and we do this with management teams. Mm -hmm. Like people who are, working in a in a very very large organization and th they're all successful but if you ask them what is your superpower what what drives you to get up every morning they give you the obvious answers which are like the business answers you need to say if you're in in the same company but then when there's like no 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 your personal ones oh yeah i have no idea i love that that's good so if anybody's listening to this they should write that down so uh what is my superpower outside of i have a 600 ftp <laughs> <laughs> so if you got a 600 ftp write in and tell us you got <laughs> 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 but i don't think anybody will <clears throat> sorry excuse me um but that's cool i mean look you know most people don't even dial into that themselves not you know i'll be honest i it is something that i look at and it's something that you and I have talked about when I was coaching you. We were like, yeah, you know, you need to look at that future vision of where you are now, how that's going to look, why you're doing this in the first place. Um, and it is still something I'm looking at. Uh, the cool, the, one of the things is I think when we talked about this is when at the start of the year, um, one of the other guys I coached, John, he said to me, because I got run over at the start of the year. And I remember thinking to myself, I need to have other coaches on board who can help me run the business if anything ever happens to me and vice versa. So we can all help each other out. There needs to be a proper structure, which is a prop, you know, is a business where things happen when I'm not even there. Um, and that's why I took these coaches on. Plus also having more people to bounce ideas off is great. Um, but when I was looking at that vision, that was part of the extra vision. It was like, I need to make sure that whatever happens, 
velo is always tight people can always go yeah these guys care they look after us properly you know um and that's in, that was important to me um and also as we grow and expand i need it to be i need the coaches that i take on board that i can trust uh are it's hard though because I, I, it's not that it's hard that i trust them but i want them to be forward thinking so with these guys i'm i'm creating sort of like a, a culture a work culture of sort of like collaborative uh coaching where when we run business or when we run our meetings together i i don't share them they chair they, they chair it yeah what do you want to talk about what you know there are things i'm going to talk about but you tell me what you want to talk about you know uh, where do you see the business going what other what things do you think i've put in there that could really change and make them better um and that's the other thing is that i've taken out my ego so i look at it and go well if you think it's rubbish just tell me <laughs> and it, they, this this go, goes now you go from an entrepreneur to be a leader inside of your organization which is the next step if you if you grow your business, you go from now I'm the one and only, and then you add a couple of people here and there, and then you you almost bring people with your skill set in that allows you to get the business to the next level. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's again part of your vision. When we talked about that in COVID, it, I was asking you, so where do you want to be with that business? And you you were saying that at that time already. Yeah. But it takes dedication and work to get to that level where you then say, okay, now we have done the foundational elements, which like the base period in, in training. If if you can't sit on a bike for two hours, maybe you should not go out for a six-hour bike ride. And it's the same things to get your business. And I think one thing is bringing your coaches into these conversations in the future, yeah. into your YouTube channel. So you go and notch up with, with that as well. So you, you bring other faces in. Yeah, so we're... What we're going to do is we're going to do uh, coaching podcasts. Awesome. All three of us will get together and talk about some of the things we see on a regular basis, some of the pitfalls we see people fall into, what we do to change it, why we do certain things within coaching. Um, because I think it's cool. Uh, I've actually interviewed Sue um, on menopause and her thoughts and processes working with people as they get hit pre-menopause, post-menopause um because she's really knowledgeable and it's like well people need to whoever even if we get one person that, that listens to that podcast and they they go oh that's what's going on with me uh you know so i think it's really important and and i've always said this your coaches including myself need to look like they're approachable right um and you know you can't always uh hit everybody all at the same time you know some people will instantly dislike you but I think if you put more stuff out there and say, look, we are really, a, you know, we're actually a cool coaching business. You know, we're not in your face. We're just trying to help you get the best shape as, as you possibly can with the time that you've got. Uh, and the same thing as the tagline is, and that's never changed. Because when, when I brought the um, the coaches on board, I remember them saying to me, it's like, oh, you know, are we going to change anything on the taglines? Like, no, this is the only thing I'm not changing. So we... We are focusing on cyclists over 40. Now, it doesn't mean we don't have people under that, but our whole focus is just getting you to be better on and off the bike um, and showing that it's possible. Because I think there's a, in my mind, there's a whole cohort of people as they hit their 40s believe that it's, it's, it's not possible. Um, I'm like, yeah, damn well it is. Um, you just need to train in a specific way. Cool. Um, is there anything that I think that you that you've that you've discovered over time, and we haven't covered that is sort of like poignant for sport as well as business, as in keeping yourself focused when you know, and, and always just moving forward, even if it's just a fraction. Or do you think we've covered that? No, I think we covered everything. What one big help is having a coach mm -hmm. and that's for <laughs> it's maybe obvious for the people that work with you and or work with me from a business context but it helps you to avoid so many pitfalls and do things the easy or the right way 
maybe mm. not the easy way, but the right way that it gets you to your results faster. I think if if we just take my example, I can only speak for myself. When I was training myself doing um, half Ironman in, I don't know, five hours and 40-ish, I would never have dialed that to the level without you. I think the last one I did, which was a hilly one, was, what was it, like five hours, 10, which is not super fast still, but for me, it was fast. <laughs> so just comparing it to myself, I would never have shaped off like more than half an hour in in in, in, in the timing. It's interesting, isn't it? You know, so um, I, I coach a lady who is actually a coach and all her friends go, why do you have a coach? And she said, look, this guy basically writes my strength training and all my training plans and says, this is what we're going, this is where your aims are, this is your events this year on the bike. I don't need to think about it. Exactly. Do it. Um, and she says, it's just such a joy to get up in the morning and go, that's what I'm doing today. Right. And, and James, who I spoke to this morning, who's he's had three weeks off because he and his wife have been away on holiday. He was saying, oh, I've kind of like done a little bit of running here and jumped on the bike. And he said, first, I'm so glad we're talking today because so, I just felt completely rudderless. <laughs> yeah, it is. If you don't have that focus, then you like it, it. going back to the car, do you jump in and you have no idea where you end up? If yeah. you have a plan, and it's, it's as important in business than it is for sports. I have a clear plan for myself right now in sport and as well, for for business and then the, the sport plan in my case right now is not that ambitious it's just hitting 90 minutes per day but i at least know that i need to do the foundational elements to to get back to the level answer this one question and then we can wrap up it's like when we're looking at our future vision it's okay potentially i guess not to completely know where that will be but maybe set a target for the first part of your vision and then take it from there right I like to have a clear picture. So I always get them into, imagine you have a picture on the wall and you're a part inside of that picture in five years from today. You paint that picture and I have like a lot of questions that help you to get to that picture, um, which I like, what are your weaknesses you want to get rid of? Where do you want to be? What is important to you in life? And all of that gets you to visualize that picture. Mm -hmm. okay and then you refine that picture over time so you have five years to refine that picture but you start with a starting picture and then you say okay this is one of my milestones is next year at this time that's where i want to be towards that that's i guess well you've said it better than i did that's what i'm trying to get across is that over time that refines and changes to be even you know loft potentially loftier yeah um because you've put all those practices and consistency over time and think well actually if i carry on this way this is going to happen um okay all right that's cool man um i, lo I love you know, i love our chats and i used to you know <laughs> I, you have been i think uh there have been three people fairly instrumental in the growth of of velo and our conversations where it was like just do it simon just like stop thinking about it and just just get it done uh you've definitely been super instrumental in that um it's been yeah it's it's just funny and i have learned over time it's like just crack on so I, it's like it doesn't matter um you know it's, it doesn't matter if i was saying to um one of my youtube videos just went nuts um but i have people like a really odd conversation like people just leaving random stuff in in uh in my uh communication stuff you know saying oh you know you don't know what you're talking about now years past i have overthought that and thought oh this is terrible i've got uh, now i just like delete yeah that's <laughs> like, that's what it is about yeah go like... go where you want to be and don't listen to too many people mm -hmm. on your way that's an interesting thing as well i think you know social media and stuff which may sound bad but i post and get off so Me too. it's like it's not that like I won't interact with them. I'll I'll post get off and I'll go back later on in the day and then it, <clears throat> sorry excuse me interact with anybody that's interacted and asked a decent question, but uh, dumb questions I'm just not interacting with. 
because that you can't argue with stupid. No, I agree. Um, it's like I and also it's like I don't have time to go backwards and forwards and know that my my answers, which is fact based and backs up on years of experience in the science, is still not going to hit home. So it's like mm, bothered, just can't be, you know. So it's just learning that skill, right? It's just not caring about what other people think anymore. Yeah. And only really sort of like dialing in with yourself, saying, I'm doing the best that I can. That's the important bit. Um, again, that boils right back down to what we do in Velo. It's like, are you doing the best with the time that you can with the time that you've got to move forward with the goal that you have? Um, and it's, yeah, it's yeah, it's an interesting conversation. It's like, it's like yeah. motivation and mindset. Sweet. Look, like, thank you so much for coming. Um, let's wrap it up there. I'm going to leave uh leave with this one question that i ask everybody uh so i'm putting you on the spot if you can have dinner with anybody alive or dead who would that be Ooh. It, right now it would be fun to have uh dinner with alex ormozzi because he has done a lot of fun stuff over the last year yeah. um yeah just for fun sake and i think as well about sport yeah, yeah, no, he's an interesting character. He's right. absolutely talk about Mister Driven, you know. And it's it, he he has because I'm always like looking deeper and looking into what is the strategy behind it. And there's so many brilliant stuff. It's mm. because I have learned a lot of things, and he's putting things out there in such a simple way, which helped so many people. So I I love the way he's thinking and he's strategizing about it. And that's yeah, would just be a fun conversation i'll um i'll try and find the uh his po- link to podcast and stick it in the uh, under this because yeah you know i think what he does is is fascinating i guess he gets that request like every every day twenty thousand times <laughs> i think uh the thing is i think people find him scary right because he's so like laser beam focused and just you know a lot of people go he's full on but, but it, it's the same like you are with with velo that's that's what it takes to be successful yeah to build a successful empire funny i've been watching alex Pomozzi um for the last year um and i love it he's just like no you need to do this this this, this yeah this. simple and i love the fact that he just gives it all for free that's what i mean with the strategy because he's making a lot of money it's not that he's doing he's doing it for free for us consuming it but in the end it's not for free we're paying with our attention yes yeah and the attention w- drives the success of his business it's super smart yeah yeah it's super smart cool look thank you very much let's uh, let's leave it there um it's that's been a really cool conversation i hope people have got a lot out of this um right well thank you very much thanks for thank coming thank you thank you for what you're doing simon so thank you. I hope you enjoyed that podcast and I hope you got something from it. Now, I think I'm going to wrap up with this because this is something I talk about a lot with the cyclists that I coach is that training and even business doesn't need to be perfect. Yes, you need to have a bit of a roadmap to, to know where you're going. But I think this is where a lot of people get stuck, especially with motivation and training, is they think because their training isn't perfect, they don't always hit the markers, or maybe a training session isn't particularly fantastic, that it's not working, and then they start to lose momentum and motivation. The one thing I get across is that my training isn't perfect, and most of the people that I coach isn't perfect. It's close to as perfect as they can hit it. If you had developed that mindset and that attitude that when you start working on yourself and realize that it doesn't always have to be perfect, it just needs to be as consistently perfect as it possibly can be, you'll start to see better results and you'll enjoy your training more and you'll get even more out of your bike. Anyway, I'll leave you with that thought. If you enjoyed this podcast, please do me a favor. Um, Comment on the actual podcast itself. Please share it with your friends. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please look, hit like, and leave a comment underneath. If you've got any questions, I'd be delighted to answer them. Thanks for listening, and I'll be back next month.